Gold, the effigy. Welcome to Nightbreed. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, I guess my first question is, how did the effigy first start? Like, what made you first decide you want to do this? Uh, well, I've always really been into music. My dad was a jazz pianist. Oh. Uh, music's very much in my whole family. Um, I started as a folk musician, okay. uh, playing acoustic guitar. Um, and like with a lot of folk songs, they, they're quite dark at times you know and I kind of really got lured in by that kind of dark fairy tale aspect of music and then my tastes got heavier and my music got heavier yeah yeah that's really cool um so the villain EP came out November last year um so you got um Andrew No on guitars and then you're does that mean you're everything else are you playing the keys and all that kind of deal uh, so yeah, like I compose all of my music. I even like compose the riffs for the guitars and then I, I just get someone else to play it. I used to play guitar a lot more, but I've moved more into like composing and getting all of that and really focusing on my voice. Yeah. Um, so I tend to outsource some of the uh, skills, but no, I can, I compose everything myself and everything else. So I'm, I'm sat there doing yeah, that's really cool. Man. Um, so the early releases and your lyric videos had kind of fantasy artwork going on, like sort of yeah. cartoon versions of you and stuff. That's pretty cool. What um is that one artist or is that was that like a few different? Oh, that's me. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've done all the art for my own EPs. It's very DIY a lot a lot of the times. Yeah, that's good, um, man. you know, it's obviously very expensive to be a musician, um, particularly in this economy. Yeah. And, you know, by the time you've added up paying for this mix, paying for this master, hiring these musicians, you know, eventually it kind of all adds up. And so any anything I can do to sort of limit the financial burden, um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, it looks great, you know, the artwork's really cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um. So this year you've had some singles this year. We had uh, Ghost, you had the Ghost video. Where was that shot? That looks like a nice spot. So that was actually just down in Mandra, around the corner from me. Uh there's um this swamp it looks really beautiful but it's a swamp um we got bitten to death by mosquitoes i think my partner actually got ross river virus (laughs) he was filming (laughs) so we paid with blood (laughs) (laughs) but no there are some stunning stunning places all around um like western australia to be honest with you so you don't have to go far (laughs) no that's right yeah i was filmed a video at the uh the salt lakes and Rockingham. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good spot as well. <laughs> um, so tell us about the the song Ghost. What are the you know the themes and that kind of thing? So Ghost, I wrote about those transitional periods. I think a lot of people can relate to feeling very low. <laughs> um, you know, I think the past couple of years particularly have been very difficult on people, yeah. and there are some things in our life that we just have to let go. You know, that we don't get closure on them we don't get to to you put a nice bow and all the you know loose threads get tied or whatever it's just it just is what it is and you kind of have to accept that and those things i think can linger as ghosts in our in our life trying to like pull us back down into that misery and ghost is really about not giving into them just kind of letting go and and even though it's painful just accepting that that happened you can't change the past and you can only really face the future because you're alive and those things aren't. Yeah, nice. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, another one earlier this year, Cinder Sun. Um, Metal Hammer described as an epic and beautiful track from a fascinating new artist. That's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I can't. I still can't believe that. I was looking at Metal Hammer. I was like, oh, no. Did they make a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's good, man. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so have you been sending your stuff out like everywhere, you know, when you're putting out songs? So, yeah, I, I was working with a PR agency, so um, they were doing PR for me and mm-hmm. that's very handy. Um, obviously, it's not easy to get placements when you think about how much music is released every single day. There are eight days of music released every day. Um, so it's really hard to get heard. I think PR is a good way to go about that. Um and yeah so we just kind of sent it out to some places and I was very surprised I'm very surprised anytime anyone picks it up to be honest with you but I was very very surprised that Mel Hammer they made it like um one of their top 10 tracks of the week and I was just like (laughs) that's cool yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> um, so another single, uh, The Game, came out. Tell us about that song. So before The Game, I released One With My Enemy, and One With My Enemy was about being gaslit um, by an abuser. And for me, <laughs> maybe this is really messed up, but in order to understand that kind of thing, sometimes I like to get it into the head of the person who does it. Mm-hmm. So the game was kind of a follow-up song of of being in the head of that kind of gaslighter, in the head of that manipulator and that abuser. Um, how it's just a game to them. You do whatever they want you to because it's just fun. They don't care. It's not hurting them. And uh, yeah, I just tried to really <laughs> get into the head of that. And yes, yeah, so the game was kind of like heavy and really high energy as opposed to one with my enemy which I think had like a lot less energy in it um so yeah they were just kind of like two sides of the same coin yeah cool and the cover for the game like the image is you with the like the raincoat on right like yeah yeah. (laughs) it was like a painter's coverall yeah yeah okay (laughs) is that like you know you're like protecting it was just this like yeah you're protected like I don't I don't get blood on me like you know all the things I do like if you're a new user like it doesn't affect you so you're mm. kind of like protected it was very strange but I, I don't know we yeah, had fun yeah yeah <laughs> um and you've listed like Evanescence as, and uh, like Joy Division as influences um I can sort of hear Catatonia and Paradise Lost as well are that like are you fans yes, of those? Like, so yeah. I I love Paradise Lost and I'm yeah, a big cool. fan of Catatonia as well so I think yeah unsurprisingly <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. they that's sort good. of I don't know if they were like a conscious I, I think it was after actually Melhammer um compared me to Paradise Lost and I was, oh, okay. I was like oh I can hear it now like I, I love them but like I'd never like consciously like oh. channeled them but after I heard that I was like no I, I can hear that that's that's fair yeah cool <laughs> like the subconscious influence yeah definitely um so what else have you been listening to lately like what kind of stuff Ooh, I listen to a lot um Today, I was listening to, uh, let me just get it up. I've been listening non-stop to, there's a small band in Canada called Dichroma who just released an EP and I'm obsessed with it. Um, It's their third EP and I I love it. Um, I've been listening to a lot of 12 Years Today. They're another indie (laughs) Canadian band. (laughs) Um, I always love putting on some Space Goat. They're over um, uh, east. And so I was listening to um, Jordan Red today. It was just, yeah, just very much like alt alt indie metal, really vibing those sorts of things. Yeah, nice. That's cool. Um, So December, um, you've got the new single coming out, yeah? Talking to the Moon. So are we going to have another video for this one? So, yeah, I'm planning to record a video uh, right now. What I, I want to use a theatre. They're all kind of booked up at the minute because of Christmas productions and stuff. So oh. um, I've got a lyric video coming out with the song. And then hopefully in January, I'm going to get the music video filmed and edited. Um, yeah. I don't really know anything about filming or editing videos. Uh, so it's been a learning a learning process. Um <laughs> Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, but now yeah, hopefully gonna get that video filmed and edited sometime in january yeah nice um what kind of uh software are you using for for all that uh so i use um after effects and premiere pro um i don't know if they're the best okay. <laughs> they're just <laughs> the ones that i i have <laughs> yeah, um cool. So yeah, I just I, I've been using those and learning the ropes. It was really funny because I was like, I watched there was a 20 minute YouTube tutorial on how to edit a video. And I watched about eight minutes of it. I was like, yeah, I haven't got time for this. <laughs> I probably could have spared the additional 12 minutes to watch the rest of the video. And then I just struggled for hours through it. So next time I'm I'm gonna watch the next 12 minutes of that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the smart thing to do. Yeah, no, no, you mean I'm a bit the same. You get the tools and you're like, all right, let's go. I don't want to, you know. Yeah, them. I had just <laughs> yeah. enough to be dangerous. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are you using for your music? Like what kind of software and stuff are you using for that? So my EP, the first EP, um, and Ivory Tower, Love Bite, and Petrol Heart, I want to say, um, those were all done in GarageBand. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then 
I moved on to logic. After that, I was like, I should invest in maybe some better, better uh-huh. software. So I, uh, yeah, logic is just seems to be garage band, but with more tools. I was like, yeah. well, I already know how to use garage band. How hard can logic be? Very hard. Um, <laughs> very, very complicated. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I took a few courses on uh-huh. music production and stuff like that. So that helped. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there as well on the logic, you know? Yeah. That's cool. Um, so what's the plan? Like you've got some singles out this year. Are you going to put another EP together or something? So, yeah, I actually have a few EPs that I'm currently writing and recording at the minute. I like things in being compact and like together. These songs go together. These songs hmm. go together. Yeah. So I hopefully have an EP coming out next year. Um, I would ideally like to release two EPs next year. One about halfway through the year, which is songs I haven't released before. and I would really, really like to re-record my original EP. Okay. <laughs> um, I've been working on just, I think my style's developed a lot of my skills, like all of that EP was recorded. I mean, some of those songs were recorded like seven years ago now. Um, um, I, I kind of want to do it better, <laughs> give it yeah. give it what it deserves. And, you know, a bit heavier maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nice. That's cool. <laughs> awesome. And um. Is there, do you think we'll ever see the effigy on stage? Like, is that something for the future, maybe? I would love to. Um, I would absolutely love to. Right now, it's a case of, because it's just me, um, making sure that I have the right um, hardware and gear to enable that, which oh. uh, they're all pretty pretty pricey. Um, and But I, I definitely, that is the intention. Yeah, nice. Oh, good. That's good to hear. Yeah, you'll probably be able to see me before anyone else because, like, the, w- will I ever be able to leave Perth or the Australian <laughs> music scene? <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> yeah. uh, Perth scene's good, you know, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sweet. All right, look, well, look, Effie, thanks for your time. I'm looking forward to seeing what much. comes next. And uh, yeah, have a good one, man. Yeah. Thank you.